welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be discussing are electric vehicle chargers that divert your excess solar energy to your electric car charger just a waste of money and plain greenwashing. Now before I get into explaining why they're a waste of money, let's first explain to everyone what they are and then we'll also explain why I don't think they're that green either. Now they're effectively a EV charger with a CT clamp which is a measuring device usually on either the solar or the supply to your house that monitor the export of your solar energy. So if they see excess power of solar being generated by your house and leaving for export to the grid, they stop that export effectively going back to the grid by ramping up your electric vehicle charger to take up that excess energy when your car's plugged in which means effectively, instead of exporting to the national grid, the excess solar energy that you would have generated now gets put into your electric vehicle. Now there's a couple of issues with this. First of all, to have one of these chargers will cost you slightly more money to fit, mainly because there's some additional wiring that has to go in for a CT clamp. Now it's not a huge cost, and a lot of the EV chargers that are sold today come included with a CT clamp that can do solar, and some of them will require additional CT clamps to do it. But there obviously is some additional wiring or some additional hardware that needs to be fitted there. It's also worth noting, this is really, really, really important that a lot of people don't actually mention, the lower the kilowatt rate you charge at on an electric vehicle, the less efficient it is. So if you're charging by your solar away, you will only be lightly putting in two, maybe three kilowatts, maybe even four kilowatts of solar energy. So way under the seven kilowatts, which means it is less efficient to charge the car at that rate. So you will be getting more losses than if you say charged it at the full seven kilowatt rate that your car is capable of. And the other issue is solar is one of these things that's pretty predictable. It um, comes out during the day and goes away during the night, which means that most people who work during the day and don't come home during the until during the night won't actually be plugged into one of these solar chargers when it's actually generating power. Now yes, 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 I hear you, Nick, we don't all we work weekends like you. Some of us actually do have some time off to spend with our family. Yep, you're probably gonna charge at the weekend, but the average EV driver charges up every three days, which means that you're not gonna be able to fully charge from the weekend from your solar array. You're gonna be basically not charging from that. Now, again, we're hearing people saying, yes, but in the summer, you can come home and you can still be draining solar energy. And yes, that is also true, but then you're likely to going to be putting your oven on when you come home from, you know, from work. And therefore that solar energy that you were gonna put in your car gets stopped anyway to power the oven, which is obviously sucking up the power from the grid. So are we actually benefiting from having a solar charger unless we work from home all day or we're retired or we are literally always parked at home in which case if you're always parked at home and you never drive anywhere i would qu query why you need a car at all well the next argument is it could save you money and oh we're gonna kibosh this one a little bit if you are on octopus you can import energy from the national grid between half 12 and half four for five pence a kilowatt hour. And which if you do want to sign up to Octopus, go down below, there's a link to my website to find the best Octopus tariff for you. But they do a few at five p per kilowatt hour during certain hours of the night to when the grid is the cleanest and lowest carbon. So if you're importing for five p and you have solar and you're exporting on Octopus Go, Unfortunately, the way the Octopus Seg tariff works, you'll only be paid 3p for that electricity. So yes, there is effectively 2p saving from charging from your solar. However, I've done some maths on this and it basically works out that over the year, if you charge the average typical electric car, that's why I keep looking away because I've got the figures here, you're gonna be putting around about 3,500 kilowatts into the car. Three and a half thousand kilowatts saved by 2p that you would get by not exporting it and not paying it 5p at night, you'd save around 70 pounds in the year. However, you're not going to be plugged in all day, all the time when it's charging. Sometimes you're not going to be charged in. Sometimes the house is, is going to be ramping down your charge. There's also going to be some losses on the efficiency that we mentioned before. So you're probably only going to be saving 
let's be let's be really genuine. Twenty pound a year. Most people will probably only be saving ten pound a year, and that is if you stay with Octopus on the SEG. And here's the best part: you don't have to be with Octopus for your outgoing electricity on your solar. You can switch to another provider who's willing to support SEG and be paid more money for that export back to the grid. So instead of being paid by Octopus, you could switch to Octopus's Agile tariff, which means you'll then have to take their import tariff, which is 35p on Agile pretty much all day at the moment because it follows wholesale rates. And wholesale rates in the UK are through the roof. Then the next possible option is obviously you could export if you're on Agile on outgoing Octopus Agile. And funny enough, in September, when I record this video, the price for Octopus Agile in September peaked to one of the highest rates yet. And again, it's written down here for me, so I don't forget, it peaked at £2.38 a kilowatt hour. That was the peak of electricity costs. £2.38 for the export. So you might have been paying 35p to import it, but you could have exported down at two pound 38 a kilowatt that's what it hit at the high and there's obviously other moments where it is not as high as that and it's lower and that is worth mentioning but again i just said to you you don't have to stick with octopus for your seg export you could move you could move to another company that will pay you more money now i've crunched some numbers and i've looked all over the internet and basically if you move to another company who does seg supports seg payments export seg most of them unless you're a customer with them, offer lower seg rates. So same if you work with Octopus and you're an external customer exporting with them, it's 3p. A lot of the other companies like Eon were offering 5.5p export, but if you are not with if, if you're not with Eon, you only get 3p. And I've crunched the numbers and basically I've ended up finding so energy. And so energy, if you are a customer or not a customer, will pay you 5p a kilowatt hour to export to them, regardless if you are receiving electricity in import from them. So you could import from Octopus and you could export with So Energy, which means that you could charge your car for five pence a kilowatt hour at night when the CO2 is low, at low from Octopus and pay 5p. But it also means that you could export your energy during the day, you know, when grid is dirty tends to be dirtier there's more carbon on the grid because there's more basically stuff that's not clean being burnt you could export your solar energy for 5p and it also means that you're going to get that efficiency saving because at night you'll be charging at seven kilowatts where instead of during the day you'll be charging at lower kilowatts and it's more convenient because it's a time that your car will physically be plugged in rather than during the day when you're likely to be at work. But where do you stand on this? Do you think it's just greenwashing? Do you think having a solar charge is important? I understand that certain people will be on fit tariffs and getting paid regardless of what they generate rather than what they export. And that is a completely different argument. I completely get that. But if you're a new solar install, are you gonna be getting a solar charger that can handle diverting that extra solar to your car or are you going to be just moving to a tariff like I've mentioned before? Now, obviously, things like this change all the time. And I do expect, actually, that the SEG export tariff will actually improve for a lot of customers based on the current wholesale rates. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Don't forget to click subscribe. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video. And I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.